Hi, I'm Kevin Byrne, and we're here today with Ravens owner Steve Bashotti, who doesn't like doing these things, but we twisted his arms, and here we are. And Steve, let's start with something that's near and dear to your heart, the Terps. The Terps. They're in the Sweet 16. What yeah, do you think? it's exciting. Um, they're, I don't know, they're, they're a frustrating team. Uh, you know, it, uh, I hate to be critical, but everybody's critical of my team, <laughs> <laughs> so I might as well. Um, no, it just seems like uh, the talent level, um, you know, it's like we need, we need three of the five to be hot. Sometimes you only get two, and we're grinding through, through games that I, I wouldn't have expected us to. Uh, frustrated with the lack of rebounding probably more than anything. You know, the passion, the heart, I love, I love the way they play, but um, and I like seeing teams peak at the right time. And, you know, you've watched Villanova. I mean, I'm a fan of them because my cousins all went there and, God, they play good. They play hard. They're good. I mean, they, they've had two romps in the, in the first round. I, 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 that would be my second favorite team. Right. They, and, Jay, and Jay Wright has that team playing. You're right. You know, we're here at the NFL owners meeting and the theme for the owners this year is uh, football is family. And I think of you growing up, uh, going to sports events, being an athlete yourself in, in high school and when you were younger, how important is, are athletics to you and your history? I, I, it's so much a part of our life. I mean, you know, you're the same way growing up. Uh, I had a brother that was an outstanding athlete, and and uh, it, it, <laughs> I don't know what I would have done with my kids if we weren't shuttling off to <laughs> t-ball and soccer, bunch ball. We used to call soccer because all the kids run next to the ball, staring at the guy that's kicking it. We used to call it amoeba ball. Amoeba, ball, right? Instead of the amoeba yeah, floating around right. the field. Um, yes, it's just you know what it's. It, between playing golf and watching sports, it's, it really takes up my whole time, and I, I love it. I love the fact that I can watch SportsCenter and be on the internet and tell my wife I'm working. <laughs> you know? But you were a fan, yeah. and, and you were as a fan as a young man, yeah. you know, and going to events. Like our fans buy our tickets and go to our yeah, events. Sure, sure. My mom and dad had Colts tickets. You know, we could only afford two. And, and we were lucky enough to go once in a while when my mother begrudgingly gave up her, you know, ticket for, for us. Um, but, you know, my mom had a lot to do with that. I lost my dad when I was eight years old, and uh, my mother was a legit sports fan, crazy sports fan, crazy Colts fan. And, um, uh, I mean, we had rules at the house watching the game. You know, Farrah Carlson came over next door and we were talking too much. He'd tell, tell you and Aaron, go watch the game at Eric's house. Very good. Yeah. So the uh, Bill Parcells has said, and a lot of people quote it, you are what your record is. So today, uh, and I hope I can say this and keep, <laughs> keep my job, but you are a 5-11 and 11 owner. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. well, if I say that Steve Bishotti is a 5-11 and 11 owner, what's your reaction to that? Um, I, I don't really have a reaction to it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the organization that we have, and uh, I'm proud of the way that they've handled losing. You can't avoid losing. You can avoid compounding your losing. And, uh, um, you know, did that prompt us to be a little more active in free agency? You know, you'd have to ask Ozzy that. I mean, we talked about all the contingencies down in Florida at our meetings, um, but it, it, it certainly had an effect. So uh, I, I don't mind embracing failure because that's part of sport. You just, um, you, 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 you don't control everything in this business. And, and it's humbling, but you know, it's, it's just part of, the, it's part of the deal. You're the owner and you had to walk through that 5-11 and 11 season and, and you're getting the same questions we're getting. What's happening? What, what, is, what is Renee, your wife, saying to you? What are your sons saying to you? What are your friends and how are you responding when you say, what's going on? Well, it's, it's funny because I spend, you know, m more time in Florida and the Bahamas than I do in Baltimore anymore. And so it's a decidedly different communication. Um, when you're talking with people that are 
NFL fans in general or fans of another team or guys that have become fans of the Ravens because they're my golfing buddies and things like that. And so they, they, they it, you know, the closer you, if you're, if you're my friend and you've become a fan of the Ravens, then you suffer with me. Mm -hmm. And so they're a lot less judgmental than they are in Baltimore because Baltimore is looking at it, uh, you know, in a vacuum and that's understandable. But um, uh, I think that they, they, you know, you get over, you get over it. The fans do too. They get optimistic. This is my, I've always said, this is my favorite time of year. Um, uh, the plotting, the strategy, the tough decisions that we have to make. Um, you know, everybody said we were definitely going to lose KO if we sign, you know, we could only sign one of them. And um, for no other reason but we have two really good guards, I was hoping to prove them wrong. You know, we, that, it did not take us out of the running uh, for KO. Um, the, the, the salary cap's going up, the market goes up, and he got more than we really thought he was going to get. We thought he would take a little less. I certainly didn't expect uh, a deal to come in and, you know, close to 12 million a year. Wow. And then you, you think about the last month for us. We've been more active in free agency than we are in most years. Yeah. You know, Ozzie is very patient, as you know, yes. and, and waits for bargains, so to speak, down the line. Is this something for this season or is this something that's going to be a new trend for the Ravens? Oh, no, I, I think you have to look at it as, you know, it's what worked for us um, uh, this year. And, you know, we didn't have many free agents. We knew we were probably not going to get many comp picks. And so, you know, I kind of, you know, gave Ozzy my blessing, so to speak, that if he needed to give up what might be a comp pick or two in order to, you know, this time of year, Ozzy said, we, our, our goal always is, Ozzy is a great line, we can line up and play. And we'd like to get to that point before we get to the draft, because that's how Ozzy stays disciplined in the draft room. Um, so you're not reaching for, for certain players because you've got gaping holes. and. Um, uh, I, I don't see us with gaping holes. I think we can do some damage with the picks that we have. We've got seven of them, four in the fourth round. I expect success. Doesn't always happen, but I expect success from the fourth round and forward. And then I take fifth rounders plus and anything we get out of them is a bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get guys like Ricky Wagner and John Urschel in the fifth round, um, uh, I had never, I had never heard of either one of them. You know, I think that you you would kind of agree that you know right. we get to the point where we know about a hundred players, and certainly those hundred players are going to be in our, in in, in the, we're going to get all of those guys. I, I in the fourth round, um, a local kid like Campanero, we watched him slide and went in, you know, late in that draft and and got him. So. Uh, but I, I, we've got seven picks that I think we can plug in and really fill out our roster. You know, last Saturday we had the tragedy of Trey Walker, and you've talked before privately about how the Ravens business, the football business, is different than the other businesses for which you've been involved. So can you talk a little bit about how that's different and relate it to the passing of Trey? The players that, you know, the camaraderie that they build between each other, the closeness that they build, um, is, it's just sad for them to, to do this. And, you know, you hope that, that, that the players um, take advantage of that opportunity to reassess their own decision making. You know, I read John's letter and it was powerful. Really. If John had, if we could have two two-day meetings in the off-season, just say mid-February, mid-March, two days. It's kind of like the effect that your summer reading had on you. And just picking up that book kind of reminded you, oh boy, I'm a month away from starting this over again. And you don't have to do, you don't have to study film. There's so much stuff that we could be teaching these yeah. young guys. Um, and getting specialists in. You know, businessmen in, in Baltimore would love to come in. We could, we could set them up with some of the brightest men in Baltimore to come in and give these guys good advice. 
would it would it change that? I don't know, but for God's sake, it, it, out of sight, out of mind. The owners hear the complaints from the coaches, mm -hmm. and uh, and we know it's in their best interest. I understand where what why the union does what they do, but they they're not pleased with the whole CBA, and neither are we. And that's usually the way that uh, collectively bargain things work. And so I'm hoping that there's something that we can give them to get that. That's what I would put as my priority of getting from the union is the permission for us to get our hands on these kids a little more in the off season. Speaking of the head coach and Ozzy, you're the boss. How do you motivate them? Or do you consider that your role? Oh, no, I've never considered. Uh, <coughs> I've never considered if I if I need to motivate people, I've got the wrong people. I may as well just I'm, I'm better off working hard to find motivated people. You know, one more thing before we let you go. And, you know, the fans want to know about the 2016 Ravens. You know, you're the guy in charge. And uh, what can they expect from the team this season? You know, the same fight we give every time. I mean, uh, the the uh, I I. I, we, we, were, we had the great fortune of having a very healthy quarterback for seven and a half years. Um, and, uh, you know, the way I hear Joe rehabbing, he'll be ready to go. Um, we heard good news on Crockett Gilmore that he doesn't need the second uh, shoulder surgery. Um, you know, we're going to get a lot of people, a lot of people back healthy. Um, so uh, we... We believe that between getting these guys back healthy in this draft that we're going to be able to compete. I think we added three real professionals uh, recently. Uh, I loved Mike Wallace's quotes about I'm going to get the last lap uh -huh. and, and how he acknowledged that 12 and a half yards a, a completion for him is not what he's built for. So uh -huh. I think that uh, he'll, he'll get back to that 17 average he had when, when Roethlisberger was chucking the ball.